All right, I've been working on uh, holsters for the FN509, you guys probably know. Let me just unload this. I've been carrying this for a couple days. Um, so I got my holster mold uh, maybe a week ago or so, and I've been doing some work on it. You can see um, the big issues I've been having or what I've been working around, they're not really big issues, but the serrations, as you know, on the 509 are, are good. Uh, that does cause, especially on the top edges here, um, potential for some drag. Uh, the other uh, thing that I was looking at is this front corner of the ejection port um, compared to the rounded edge of the slide back here. Uh, this was also causing just a little bit of drag. Um, so the mold did need a little bit of work. Uh, this is how the molds look when they're brand new. This is the uh, Beretta APX, so I'm not sure if you can see, like it has, you can see where the serrations are, and when they make the mold, they fill those in, but if you run your finger on this, you can still feel each serration. Um, so that's just part of making the mold. The material that they fill that with uh, just must shrink a little bit. Uh, so these do need a little bit of work. If you just buy a mold and make a holster off of it, it's not going to fit um, at least to our standards. There's going to be a lot of drag. The other thing um, that we do right off the bat, I haven't even touched this one yet, but you have all the controls here, like the um, slide stop and a little takedown on the Beretta. It's got this giant takedown, like a CZ or something. Um, and on this side, um, you know, your lock and your, or your, sorry, your takedown lever and your slide lock. I'm doing all this in the camera, it looks backwards to me, but anyway. Um, so all of that has to be addressed. Um, you can see what we do here, maybe. Um, I'll show you on this side. So on the left side of the FN, uh, we, we mill all those controls down so that they're completely flat, and then we go back in with a solid piece so that you end up with a channel all the way back through the holster like this for those controls to pass through. So the, the molds, I'm just saying, they're not just plug and play. They're like, all oh, the molds out, so start shipping holsters. Well, the other thing we do on our um, on our 509 holsters and, and Glocks and, and many of them, uh, we do uh, build a little channel for the extractor, because as you know, the extractor does poke out um, just a little bit when you have the gun loaded. So on the mold, I mean, obviously they're not making the molds off of a loaded gun. So typically they don't have that channel built in. So we go back and add that. Anyway, um, this uh, tan, this is called Coyote, no, this is called Coyote Gray, actually. Um, kind of a neat color. Um, it kind of goes pretty good with our gray eyelets. Uh, I thought that looked good. Anyway, um, this was the first test holster that I made. And although the fit is fine, I mean, it's, it's snug and everything like that. Like, as you're putting the gun in, you're just getting more drag than, than is necessary. So then um, did a little bit of work on the serrations and things like that. And you can actually probably see here that, that you can see what it's doing is the serrations on the top edge there are just rubbing on the inside of the holster. So let me clean that, those shavings off there. Okay, so uh, no more shavings. This was the second one uh, after building out those serrations a little bit, and um, it's better. I mean, the fit's still right on how you want it because the trigger guard we spec out, and that's perfect right off the bat. But I mean, once we once we mock it up um, off of the actual measurement of the gun, the trigger guard is is just fine. So the retention's fine. It's just the that drag, and this is better. It's kind of like uh, what people are complaining about the trigger being gritty, right? Um, if you get in close here, if this will focus, um, you can see there's minimal shavings. And I mean, if you had one of these holsters, which I might sell these, I might give them away, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Um, the holster functions 100%, and after you draw the gun out of them a bunch of times, like if you look in here, with a light, I can see exactly where it's dragging. That helps me diagnose what's going on with the mold and things like that. I mean, if you draw the gun in and out a bunch of times, um, you know, the shavings is going to decrease every time and eventually it's probably not going to uh, be an issue. Uh, the other thing that we typically recommend is to take some type of 
armor all type product or even like a gun oil, um, a light gun oil or like a dry lube and use that on the inside of the holster. I know there's holster specific products now. Um, I have not uh, used any of those, but I imagine they work pretty much um, like uh, the Armor All, or I like to use that Hornady One Shot uh, Dry Lube. It's an aerosol, so you can just hose it in the holster and let it sit, and it dries, and uh, it's completely dry. Then you can run like a soft microfiber through the holster, something like that, it kind of buffs it, and makes it nice and slick. Anyway, I did my final mold revisions uh, last night. I finished up um, blocking and taping everything on the mold um, this morning and made uh, this uh, stealth gray, dark gray, uh, storm gray, whatever you want to call it, this holster. And now the gun, the insertion is nice and smooth. Still has that pop that you would imagine. There's still no play or anything, you know, the gun's not going to rattle around, um, but you can insert this a bunch of times over and over and we're not getting any of the Kydex shavings or any transfer onto the slide. So I'm calling the mold good for our IWBs. Um, hopefully in the next week or two uh, we can start going full production on those. I do have a couple big uh, batches I'm working on that have to get done, they're on deadlines. Um, for um, specific customers. So um, I'm gonna get to the 509s just as soon as I can, but I wanna let you know uh, what was going on there. Uh, so this is our standard um, IWB taco with a tuckable snap loop and uh, the claw or the wing. Um, I've been wearing one of these, like I said, all the different revisions I've been wearing for a couple days each. And uh, you know, going shopping, hardware store, grocery store, wherever, and with just a t-shirt. It's 90 degrees here in Illinois this time of year, um, so the concealment's fine. Uh, I I am getting a slight bit of printing just from the back edge of the grip, which with the 17 round uh, grip and mag, you would kind of expect that. Um, if that's a concern for you and you are having that issue, uh, you can add the foam wedge kit uh, to your holster, which the holster will come with uh, Velcro uh, adhered to this portion of the holster and it'll come with a high density foam block and the opposite um, mating Velcro which you cut and shape the block to what you want, Velcro it on and then what that does is as the claw is rotating the grip in that foam wedge is going to push the muzzle just out away from you enough that it's going to cause this uh, kind of fourth dimension or whatever three-dimension uh, rotation, which is gonna keep that grip uh, much tighter and uh, prevent printing uh, even more. So that's where we're at with the 509. Uh, when I get to it, this Beretta APX will be getting all of the same testing and all of that. So appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch this. And uh, if you got any questions, leave a comment or shoot me an email or uh, whatever's convenient for you. Thanks.